Good day, Grade Twelves. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. Um, on the last lesson which we had, which was on Friday, we were doing. Sorry, I suddenly forgot what day it was because tomorrow is a public holiday again. Um, we were doing sequences and series, and we did arithmetic series and sequences. Now, um, reminded you about how to do that, and they're also called APs. And we started with geometric sequences, and we're going to carry on with doing a couple of examples of geometric sequences, and then we're going to do some theory, etc., etc. So basically, the rest of this lesson is going to be on arithmetic, geometric sequences, and series, and then we're going to move on to. Um, quadratic sequences and series okay and then we'll do a couple of exam paper questions and we'll see how far that gets us okay so this is a typical exam question it gives you k minus 2 2k minus 6 and 4k minus 8 so the first three terms of a geometric sequence so remember what is a geometric sequence it is something that has got a common ratio so it's a r to the n minus 1 where a is your first term n is the nth term and r, r is your common ratio which is t3 over t2 which also equals t2 over T1. So as soon as you see the term, the word geometric, you should be thinking common ratio. Okay, so it says find the value of K, and that's why I'm hinting by saying that you're looking at the common ratio, because your common ratio is going to what's going to give you the value of K. What we're going to do is we're going to say, well, this is term one, this is term two, and this is term three, right? So we know that term 3 divided by term 2, which is going to be 4k minus 8, all over 2k minus 6, has to equal term 2 divided by term 1. So it's 2k minus 6 all over k minus 2. So do you agree I could cross multiply and solve for k? And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go 4k minus 8 times by k minus 2 is equal to 2k minus 6 all squared. So let's multiply that out. Um, if you struggle with multiplying, remember we can use FOIL. So it's first with first, so it's going to be 4k squared. Then the outer, so it's 4k times by minus 2 is minus 8k. The inners is minus 8k. And then it's going to be the last, which is plus 16, is equal to 4k squared. And then you multiply these and double them, so it becomes minus 12 doublet is minus 24k plus 36. And look how pretty it is. There's a 4k squared and there's a 4k squared. So they cancel. Yay, so now we only have to solve things for k's. So you've got minus 16k plus 16 is minus 24k plus 36. So let's put all the k's on the one side and all the numbers on the other side. So we've got minus 16k plus 24k is equal to 36 minus 16. If we add that, we get 8k is equal to 36 minus 16 is 20. Do you agree? Let me just check that, yes. So therefore k is going to be 20 over 8 which has got a common factor of 4, so it's going to be 5 over 2. So therefore the value of k is 2 and a half, or 5 over 2. Okay, so now that we've got the k is equal to 5 over 2, now they want the first three terms. Okay, so that's pretty easy. All we're going to do is substitute k into each of these. So the first term is 2 and a half minus 2, which equals a half, right? The second term is 2 times by 5 over 2 minus 6. These cancel, so we get 5 minus 6, which is minus 1. The third term is 4 times 5 over 2 minus 8. With these cancel to give you 2, so you get 2 times 5 is 10 minus 8, which is 2. So my first three terms are going to be a half, minus 1, and 2. Okay, and now it says calculate the value of the 12th term, and now I need some space. 
So unfortunately, I'm going to have to raise all of this like this manually. Very quickly. I just want to make space. So grade 12s, if you missed anything, if I went too quickly through this, remember that um, this is recorded. So what you can do is go and click on the same link that you clicked on to get to this lesson and you will get a recording that's after the lesson, obviously. And then you can actually go and see what you may have missed. You can watch it again. Or another good thing to do would be to stop or pause the video at the beginning of each question and then try the questions for yourselves and see if you get it right. Okay. And then you can obviously carry on watching. So we want the 12th term, the 12th term. So we want T12, which equals AR to the 12 minus 1. That's all we know at the moment. But we know A, that's the first term, which is a half. So we can say that's a half, sorry, a half times by r to the 11. Okay, so if we do that, do you agree that that becomes what? Um, that we now need to get r. So if you look carefully, we need to work out what r is, and r is t3 divided by t2. So obviously t3 divided by t2 is going to be 2 divided by minus 1, which is minus 2. So we've got a half to the power of minus 2 all to the power of 11. A half to the power of minus 2 all to the power of 11. Okay, I hope that you understand that. And now what we're going to do is just pop that into our calculator. So we're going to go negative 2 to the power of 11, and then we times that by 0 0.5, and we equal to negative minus 1024. Okay, nice and easy, right? Okay. Now we need to look at the sum of the geometric series. Now, if you recall on Friday, um, I went through the theory on how to work out the sum of an arithmetic series. And I said to you, you needed to learn it. And the other one you need to learn is this one, the sum of a geometric series. Grade 12s, chances are that I know that you've already written your June exam. Obviously, your prelims are coming up. Chances are that if you've been given the sum of the arithmetic series in your June exams, your examiners might will probably ask you the sum of the geometric series in your prelims or vice versa. They love asking it because there are very few theory questions left in the first paper of, of maths. So they like asking these. Okay, so you need to be able to work it out. And the best way to do this is, yes, you need to study it to make sure you don't make silly mistakes. But if you understand the steps, then it's very easy to memorize them. So let's go through it. First of all, we know that the sum is given, the sum of n terms is a plus, and remember series is different from sequence. Sequence has got commas, so like it's one, three, five, whatever, where series we add up. Okay, so this is the sum of the series. So the first term is a, the second term is ar, the third term is going to be a times r times r, because it's a common ratio, it's a r squared. So this is t1, right? That's t2, that's t3, that's t4. So do you notice that the r power is one less than the actual term, which we know because t to the n is a r to the n minus 1. So therefore, the last term is going to be a r to n minus 1. The second last term is going to be a r to n minus 2. The third last term is going to be a r to n minus 3. Okay, pretty obvious, right? But now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this term, the, all these, this whole series by R. So therefore you get, instead of A, you now have AR. Okay, instead of AR, you now have AR squared, etc, etc, all the way through to AR. And now what we're going to do is subtract them. We're going to subtract this one from this one. So if you do that, you're left with that A goes there. AR minus AR cancels to give you naught. AR squared cancels with AR squared to give you naught. AR cubed cancels AR cubed to give you naught. AR to the n minus 3 cancels to give you naught. AR to the n minus 2 cancels. AR to the n minus 1 cancels. And then you're left with minus AR to the n. Okay, so do you agree you end up really with A minus AR to the n? That's what you're left with. A minus AR to the n. So what we're going to do is that's fine. 
But now, do you agree that here we can take out a common factor of s to the n and you're left with 1 minus r. So what can we can do? We can divide both sides by 1 minus r because we're actually solving for s to the n. So we do that. And then we're left with, hang on, I haven't done that yet. What they first said was we took out, it doesn't matter which order you do this in. You can take out a common factor of A on this side, so you're left with 1 minus R to the N there. Okay, now you divide both sides by A, 1 minus R. We're dividing this by 1 minus R, and this by 1 minus R, and you're left with this there. Okay, so you need to learn this. And actually the best thing to do is just know what the series is and then realize that with the, the proof of the AP or the arithmetic series, what do you do? You basically don't multiply, you add it, okay? You add two of them. Whereas, yeah, you multiply this by the common ratio. So with the GP, you multiply the common ratio and then you subtract. With an arithmetic series, you reverse it and then add them. Okay, that's the trick. That's all it is. You need to go and learn this. Right, and obviously S then is a sum, A is the first term, R is common ratio, and N is the number of terms. Nothing's different there. So now we have to find S to 8. But remember, what did we say the sum was? A times 1 minus R to the N all over 1 minus R. So let's write that out for us. It's S to the N is equal to A 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. Now, some teachers will say to you that, oh, that only works if R is smaller than 1, and if R is bigger than 1, then you have to write S to the N is equal to A, R to the N minus 1 over R minus 1. That would be for R is bigger than 1, that one there. You don't have to worry about that because they cancel. So it doesn't matter which way you do it, it's always going to work out correctly. This is just makes it easier for you to work out. But either or is going to work, and this is on your formula sheet. Okay, so you don't actually have to memorize it, you just have to know how to prove it and then how to use it. So let's do this example. It says you've got 12 minus 48 plus 192 is a given series. And isn't this nice where they've shown you basically that that is a plus and then a minus and a plus? They didn't have to do that because what could have happened is you couldn't, you could have maybe mistaken it and not put the minus in. If they'd written 12 minus 48 plus 192 and you were working out R and you forgot to include the minus, you would have got the incorrect R. So by them writing like this, they're actually being very nice to you. They're making you realize that R should have a negative number in front of it, okay? So now we want to find the sum to eight terms. So we want S8 is equal to, what's the first term? It's 12, one minus, we want R to the eight, all over one minus R. So let's work out what R is, okay? So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say term three divided by term two, or you could say term two divided by term one, and that's pretty easy. It's minus 48 all over 12, which is minus four. So our R is, the, is negative four, okay? So now this becomes 12, 1 minus minus 4 to the power of 8, all over 1 minus minus 4. Okay, so that's 12 over, so 1 minus minus 8, 4 to the power of 8 is negative 4 all to the power of 8. Okay, negative 4 all to the power of 8 is minus, sure. It becomes 1 plus 65536 all over 5. So we plus 1 times by 12 divided by 5. And the answer is minus 157284. So that's s to the 8. Sorry, 8, not infinity. s to the 8 is minus 157,284. Okay, now it says, 
how many terms must be added to give a sum of 2460? Hmm. So what's interesting now is we're solving for n. Yeah, we are solving for n. So let's have a look at it. We've got s to the n is equal to a, 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r. So our first term is again 12. We got 1 minus minus 4 to the power of n all over 1 minus minus 4 all equals 2, 4, 6, 0. Oh. So do you agree that I need to first solve for this bracket up here? And I can do that by multiplying by 5 and dividing by 12. So I can go 2, 4, 6, 0. Oh, multiplied by 5, divided by 12 is going to equal 1 minus minus 4 to the power of n. Okay, so let's do that. 2460 times 5 divided by 12 is equal to 1025. So this is 1025 is equal to 1 minus minus 4 to the power of n. So I can subtract 1 and I'm left with 1024 is equal to minus minus 4 to the power of n. So obviously then this is minus. Now what we can we do? We can use a log. We can use a log. So the rule is, and I'm just going to write it over here, and I've mentioned this before and I've actually done a little bit of an extra lesson on logs in these lessons because officially logs aren't in the curriculum. However, you do use them in finance and you use them if they ask you for how many terms. Okay. Now, you could cheat. You could go 4 to the power of 2, 4 squared is 16, 4 to the power of 3 is 64, 4 to the power of 4 equals 256, 4 to the power of 5 is going to be 1024. So you could do it. You could actually put that in the calculator and go for it. But another way of doing it is realizing that if you've got 2 to the 3 equals 8, then if you rearrange this, it becomes log 8 base 2 equals 3. That is the rule. Okay, you can do A, B's and C's, but I find it easier using numbers. Okay, well, I find that my students find it easier if I use numbers. So we're going to use that rule over there. So this would be the same as the 8, this would be the same as the 2, and this would be the same as the 3, right? So you'd end up saying log of 1024, okay, minus, minus, to base negative 4 is equal to n. Oh, it's equal to n. So that could be rewritten as log of 1024 over log 4 is equal to n. And if you put that in the calculator, you're going to get n is equal to 5. n is equal to 5. Right. Okay. That was quite a nice question. Now it says, determine x and then the sum of the first 12 terms. So we get given this. We get 1x over 8 and 1 over x. And they don't tell you if it's a common ratio or if it's a common difference. Okay, but I'm pretty sure that this year is definitely a GP because we're in the GP section and I wouldn't have put this in unless it was GP. If it wasn't, we would have had to been told that this was a GP because in this type of expression, this could have been an AP as well. Okay, in which case, this is term one, this is term two, and this is term three. So we know that term three divided by term two has to equal term two divided by term one. So term three is one over x is all divided by x over eight, and that has to equal to x over eight divided by one. Okay, so obviously that's just x over 8. That's quite easy. This, remember, what do we have to do? When we divide, we have to tip in times. So we've got 1 over x times by 8 over x is equal to x over 8, right? So this becomes 8 over x, we go, 8 over x squared is equal to x over 8, right? Then do you agree we can cross cancel? 
So 8 cancels with 8, and x cancels with x squared, and we get 1 over x is equal to 1. And how nice is that? Because that means that x equals 1. So then what are our terms here? Does that work? Does that work? It becomes 1, 1 over 8, and then 1. That doesn't work, does it work? Let's see if I made a mistake. 1 over x divided by x over 8 is equal to x over 8 divided by 1. So 1 over x times 8 over x is equal to x over 8. So you get 8 cancels with 8, x cancels with the squared, you get 1 over x is equal to 1, x equals 1. That's right. Okay, so then what are we doing? Hmm, oh, that is right, because what are we doing? We're timesing by, we're dividing by 8. We're timesing by 8 every time, 1, 8. So if we divide by 1, 8, we get 1 divided by 1, 8 is 1, 8. 1, 8 divided by 1, 8 is 1. So that is perfectly correct. So it's a ratio. So the common ratio, R, is going to be 1 divided by 1 over 8 which is just 8. Okay, so that's our common ratio. Our a is our first term, which is 1. And they want to know what is the sum of the first 12 terms. So you've got s to n is equal to a, 1 minus r to the 12 over 1 minus r. Okay, so the first term is 1, 1 minus 8 to the 12, all over minus 7. Okay, sure. So that becomes 1. It's going to be a very big number. 8 to the power of 12 is, <laughs> it's a really big number. I think there's a mistake here. I think this is supposed to be a squared. Okay, I'm going to come back to this question. I'm going to look it up and see if there was a mistake written here. And then I'll come back and see what has happened. I apologize about that. Okay, let's look to the infinite series. The infinite series is a series where there is no last term. No last term. Okay, so if you look for an arithmetic series, <sighs> the sum to infinity will result in a diverging series. A diverging series. In other words, the number is going to get bigger and bigger. The number is going to get bigger and bigger. Bigger. Okay. So, in other words, the number will become infinitely big or infinitely small. So, in other words, if your arithmetic series was 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus whatever, obviously this number is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. If, however, it was 1 plus uh, minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 plus minus 4, then obviously do you agree that the number is getting smaller and smaller and smaller? So therefore we can see that the arithmetic series is a diverging series that either gets infinitely big or infinitely small. Will you just hold for a second? Really sorry about that. We had a bit of a predicament, but it's been sorted now. Right, so as you can see here, if the sum is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, the numbers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And like I said, you have a diverging series. So diverging series, the numbers are going away from each other. They're getting bigger and bigger or smaller and smaller. Right, like I said, a geometric series is going to be converging 
if and only if the ratio, the common ratio, is between 1 and minus 1. In other words, it has to be a fraction. Your common ratio has to be a fraction. It has to be a fraction. If your common ratio is a fraction, then what you're doing is you're basically multiplying the previous number by a fraction. So the number becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, which means that your overall series is getting closer and closer to a specific number. So if, let me give an example. If your numbers were, um, let me see, a half, a quarter, an eighth, a sixteenth, and one over 32. Do you see that every time what's happening is this fraction is being halved, right? So what happens is, and because if you've got R, R remember is T3, T2 divided by T1, which is the same as T3 divided by T2. So it's going to be, in this case, it'll be a quarter divided by a half, okay, which is going to work out to be a half. And the same for that, okay? So what is happening is a ratio is a fraction. A ratio is a fraction. And it becomes, this number then becomes closer and closer and closer to actually being one. If I had to go a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus a sixteenth plus a one thirty second, I'm adding numbers, but I'm not those numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller so effectively on a number line i'd say okay fine i'm adding a half then i'm adding a half of that so i'm adding a quarter so now i'm over yeah right now i'm adding a half of that so now i'm over yeah but now i'm adding a half of that so now i'm over yeah do you see i'm never really getting to the end i'm getting smaller and smaller and smaller every time so effectively effectively i'm never quite getting to the end Right, and there's an example exactly what I've just written. Four, two, one, a half, a quarter. Okay, so the formula for the sum to infinity, S infinity is A over one minus R, where the sum to infinity is the, obviously the segment, sum with this sum to infinity symbol. A is the first term and R is the common ratio. R is the common ratio. So now we're going to look at an example where you've got what must x be for the series? You've got 3 times by 2x minus 1 plus by 3 times 2x minus 1 squared plus 3 times 2x minus 3 is cubed. And they want to know what must x be for the series to converge? Now, the cool thing is, grade 12s, if you see the words converge, if you see the words converge, you know that it has to be a geometric series, geometric series, right? It has to be, which means you're looking for a common ratio. How cool is that? We also know because they give it to us on a formula sheet that S to infinity is equal to A over one minus R. So S infinity equals A over one minus R, right? So what do we need? We need the first term and we need our R. Okay, and then we need, in this case, all we, this would be the sum to infinity, but in this case, we just want it to converge. So all we need to do is work out the R. So to work out the R, we've got T3 minus T2 has to equal T2 over T1, but we do that to prove, that's required to prove that we've got a geometric series. If we want to just work out R, we just do T3, T3 divided by T2 or T2 divided by T1. So I'm going to do that. Here's T1, here's T2, here's T3. So I'm going to take T2, which is 3, times by 2x minus 1 all squared, and I'm going to divide it by 3, 2x minus 1. Okay, so this cancels with that. That cancels, and you're left with 2x minus 1. So 2x minus 1 is my r. My common ratio is 2x minus 1. So now what do we need to do? Now we need to solve for this, okay? So we've got 2x minus 1 has to be smaller than 1 and bigger than minus 1. And now what I want you to do is I want you to take it nice and slowly. We're just solving this inequality, but you need to do it in baby steps. Again, baby steps. I keep using that phrase. 
I want you to look just at the left hand side. If we're solving for the left hand side, we want to we want the x to be itself by itself. So what do we do? We're going to take this minus one to the other side. So it becomes minus one minus one is smaller than two x, right? But at the same time, we can look at this side here. And we can go, well, we can take this minus one. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake, hang on. When you take the minus one across, it becomes a plus one. So this one, when I take it across, it becomes one and take it across becomes plus one, right? So then if we're looking at the purple side, it would minus one plus one is zero, is smaller than two X, which in turn is smaller than two, okay? Now we need to divide both all of these by two to get rid of that two. So what do we have? We've got X is smaller than one and bigger than zero. So it says, what must X be for the series to converge? Well, X must be smaller than one and bigger than zero. That's what it needs to be for the series to converge. Okay, so remember whenever you see the words converge, you need a geometric series and you need to think R and then you need to find the value for R where it's smaller than one and bigger than minus one. And by the way, this is obviously not going to be on the form, the sheet or anything. You need to learn that. Right, it says find the sum to infinity for the series 27 plus 9 plus 3. Okay, so we know that sum to infinity is equal to A over 1 minus R. A over 1 minus R. So again, A equals 27. Our R, it can just be T2 divided by T1 or T3 divided by T2 or whatever. So in this case, it would be 9 divided by 27. Divide both the top and the bottom by 9. You get 1 over 3. So R is a third. So therefore, our sum to infinity is going to be 27 over 1 minus a third, which can be rewritten. I don't know why I'm writing on the side there. S infinity equals 27 over what? 1 minus third is 2 thirds. What do we do when we divide? When we divide, we tip in time. So we're going to do 27 times by 3 over 2. And then really easy, 3 sevens are going to be 21. In fact, let me not do this on my head. 27 times 3 equals, divided by 2 equals, again to give you 40, comma 5. 40 comma 5. So what we're saying is this numbers, if we keep adding them, if we keep adding 27, 9, okay, we keep adding 27 plus 9 plus 3 plus 1 plus a third plus a, what is that, 1 ninth plus 1 27th, etc, etc. If we keep adding, we will get to a grand total. It will approximate, it will get as close as darn it to 40 comma 5, okay? It'll probably get to 40 comma 9 Nine, I mean, sorry, 40 comma 4999999, etc., etc. Okay, so sum to infinity approximates 40 comma 5. Right, now it says the sum to infinity of a geometric series is 15. They say the sum to infinity is 15. They also tell you R is 2 over 3. How nice of them. It says find the first three terms. We want the first three terms. So we know the sum to infinity is equal to A over 1 minus R. So we've got the sum to infinity. We've got R. Can we get A? Yes, we can. And that's important. Why? Because A is our first term. And then it's very easy to work out a second term and a third term because we've got the common ratio. So let's do that. We've got 15 is equal to A over 1 minus 2 over 3. So then that means that 15 is equal to A over 1 over 3. So then what do we do when we cross multiply? Yeah, we're dividing. So what we could do, just to make it easier for ourselves, we could go 15 is equal to A divided by 1 third. Is that a bit easier? So when you take across, what do you do? You times. So we're going to go we're divide, divide it on the side. We're going to take it across. We times. We've got 15 times by one third is equal to A. 
Therefore, A has to equal to 5. Okay, A has to equal to 5. Right, so now we know that the first term is 5. Now, the next term is going to be 5 times 2 over 3, which is going to be just 10 over 3. Then we multiply this by 2 over 3 again, which becomes 20 over 9, and so on and so on, and that's how you do it. Okay. Now, we're getting to exam type questions, type of questions that I kind of like doing. And it's a type of question you guys get to need to get to really get to grips with. Okay, it says, the first two terms of an arithmetic series A and an infinite geometric series B are the same. So this is an AP and this is a GP. And at the moment, they look exactly the same. It's minus 2 plus X and minus 2 plus X. Now it says, write in terms of X the third term of the geometric series and the third term of the arithmetic series. Well, do you agree the third term of the arithmetic series is going to be x minus minus 2, which is x plus 2. All we're doing is going t2 minus t1. Okay, is that get that? What is that giving us? That is giving us a common difference. So now we need to add that to our second term, our T2, to get our T3, right? Do you understand that? Maybe I should start this question again. Maybe I should start to zap it. Okay, to, we've got T1 here and T2 here. This is an arithmetic series, so we need a common difference. The common difference is given by T2 minus T1, which in this case is X minus minus 2, which is X plus 2. Now that's the common difference. Now what we need to do is we need to add that to our second term to get our third term. Therefore T3 is going to be x plus x plus 2, which is 2x plus 2. Okay, now we can do exactly the same type of equation, but we're going to do it for the GP. In the GP, the arithmetic, the geometric series has got a common ratio. So that's going to be T3 divided by T2, or T2 in this case, divided by T1. So it's going to be X over minus 2. So that's our ratio. So we need to multiply our X, our T3, is going to be X multiplied by X over negative 2. Okay, which is going to be x squared over minus 2. So now we've got our first three terms of our AP and our first three terms of our GP. Okay, let me just write them out nicely for us. Our A is going to be minus 2x and then 2x plus 2. And our geometric sequence on this side, our B is going to be minus 2x and x squared over minus 2. Now it says, now it says, if the sum of the first three terms in the arithmetic sequel is e series is equal to the third term of the geometric series, calculate the value of x. So they're saying the sum of these three equals this dude here. The sum of the first three terms in the arithmetic series is equal to the third term of the geometric series. Find the value of x. So we're going minus 2 plus x plus 2x plus 2 is equal to x squared over minus 2. Okay. And that's quite nice because minus 2 and plus 2 cancel. So we've got 3x is equal to x squared over minus 2. Okay, so do you agree we can multiply everything by minus 2 to get rid of the minus 2? So we've got minus 6x is equal to x squared. And then, do you realize that we can now say, well, in that case, we can solve for this. We go x squared plus 6x is equal to 0. I'm just taking everything across. You take out a common factor of x and you're left with x plus 6 equals 0. Therefore, x equals 0 or x is equal to minus 6. And obviously, x cannot equal 0 because then we'd have minus 2, 0, and 2. Actually, that works. That's fine. Minus 2, 0, and that would also be 
zero. So that wouldn't work. Well, actually, no, it would work because you're multiplying everything. Okay, so it works. Okay, both of them work. Okay, now they've kind of given you hints. So even if you screwed this up and you couldn't get the answer, you can still do this bit. So both of them work and it's always good to check that they both work. Okay, now it says if x is minus 6, does the geometric series converge? Okay, so now we need to substitute into b. So we go b is minus 2 minus 6 and then it's minus 6 squared over minus 2 which becomes minus 2 minus 6 minus 6 squared is 36 over minus 2 36 over minus 2 which is the same as saying minus 2 minus 6 36 divided by 2 is going to be 18 and that's a negative Yes, I'm right. Okay, and does that converge? Yes, it does. And why does it converge? It converges because these numbers are getting, actually, let's see if it does. In order for it to converge, your R has to be, your R has to be a fraction. But we worked out the fraction, the R, the R is this, it's X over negative two. So then if we've got minus six over minus two, that is three, and that is not, not a fraction. So we can say therefore that no, it does not converge because of the fact that that's not a fraction. You can also say it doesn't converge because these numbers, although they're getting more negative, are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. Sure. Okay. So now I'm going to take, I'm going to stop there because of the fact that this is a nice long question so what I'd like to suggest you do is that you take a screenshot or you pause the video at this point in time on this last question and try it for yourselves for homework not homework but you know what I mean for tomorrow not for tomorrow sorry tomorrow's a public holiday yay no lessons tomorrow no it's a public holiday so it will be for Wednesday and then we will carry on with this on Wednesday have a great day and have a great public holiday tomorrow. Cheers.